Hey everybody, hope you guys are all doing safe. So this is the Realme GT7 launching in Paris today for the European and Southeast Asian market. Now, if you follow mid-range Android phones closely or if you just follow my channel, you may be thinking, wasn't there already a Realme GT7 that came out like six months ago, the orange one? You would be right, but that phone is the Realme GT7 Pro. This is the non-pro standard version of the Realme GT7. Now, if you're wondering, isn't it very confusing that Realme is launching two phones in the same series six months apart? I mean, in different calendar years too. That's confusing, right? I agree with you. That is confusing as hell, but it is what it is, man. That's just how Chinese brands do things. On top of that, this phone and the Realme GT7 Pro, they actually have quite a bit different specs and, th and there are some areas where this phone is better than the Pro model. So it really doesn't make sense. So the biggest selling point of this phone is that it comes with a 7,000 million hour battery. 7,000. That is freaking huge. Like to put it into perspective, like the iPhone 16 Pro Max has a battery that's like 4,800 something. Even the, the newest ultra Chinese ultra phones I've been testing have a 6,000 million hour battery. So this guy has an extra 1,000 million hour battery on top. And on top of that, despite the large battery, look at how thin this phone is. It still measures only 8.3 millimeters in thickness. That's the same thickness as the iPhone 16 Pro Max. And actually, if you compare it to like, say the Honor 400 here, which has a 5,300 million hour battery, the two phones look about the same in thickness, even though this has a much larger battery. So how did Realme manage to do it? Well, Realme is clearly using the silicon carbon battery technology that Oppo introduced about six months ago for the Oppo Find X8 series. So the silicon carbon battery, it's a type of battery that is a lot more energy dense due to it using silicon carbon instead of lithium iron, like in the batteries used by Samsung phones. So silicon carbon battery being more energy dense allows Realme to cram more juice into a battery body that it's basically the same size as before. So that explains why this phone really didn't get any bulk here, even though the battery, it's at 7,000 million hour. The phone weighs 206 grams, so that's also lighter than almost every other tip-top flagship out there. So that's the biggest selling point, the 7,000 million hour battery, and it can also charge at 120 watt speeds with the included charger. So, so you can go from zero to 50 in just 14 minutes, or zero to 100 in 40 minutes. And yes, 7,000 million hour is gonna be enough to last all day for just about everybody. I am a very heavy user. I'm outside 14 hours a day on weekends, taking a lot of photos and videos. And this guy finishes the day with like 30, 40% battery left, which is better than just about every other flagship phone that I've tested in 2025. Let's take a look at the rest of the hardware. So you have a 6.8 inch LTPO OLED screen, 2780 by 1264 resolution will refresh rate up to 120 hertz. This guy gets up to 1600 nits of sustained brightness or 6000 nits of peak HDR brightness. Under the screen is an in-display fingerprint reader, but this is an optical scanner, not ultrasonic. It is still super fast and accurate, but it is a little bit low on the phone, like some most Realme phones actually. On the backside, you have this material that is mostly glass, but not entirely. It is made of a combination of glass and graphene. So the graphene and glass combination keeps the phone light. That's why it's only 206 grams. Also, the graphene helps cool the phone. In fact, Realme is marking this as the world's first phone with a graphene back. When I touch it, it does feel a little bit different from glass, but still very nice. It's, it's not slippery. It's quite matte. It does not attract fingerprint. And also, I just want to say, I really like the look of the phone overall, even though, you know, it's just one standard color. I like little touches, like the fact that the frame, the aluminum frame has this brushed coating to it. So it looks a little bit more metallic. And also the power button is red with a little bit of a subtle texture. And around the camera module is a red trim. Little things like that add flavor to a phone and make it look good. And I think Honor should take some notes because this is the Honor 400. I reviewed it like couple like a week ago and this phone just looks so dull like just completely dark gray all around like even a little bit like if you make the power button yellow or you add a little bit of like a blue trim to the camera module will add some flavor to what is an otherwise very bland phone this phone is just much more better looking in my opinion without looking too overly flashy if you do want flashy there is a special edition Realme GT7. It's made in partnership with um, sports car maker Aston Martin. Now, I don't know anything about cars, 
So I don't care, but I know a lot of people who are into luxury sports cars. That's like a big name. Ashton Martin, it's like, I believe it's the car that James Bond drives in some of the movies. So anyway, Realme has partnered with that brand to release a special edition called a Realme GT7 Dream Edition. It has a special back plate with the Ashton Martin green. It has a two-tone design with a little bit of like a pattern on the back. It also has the Ashton Martin logo, obviously. And the phone comes in a very nice packaging. Otherwise, all the internal components and specs are exactly the same between the Dream Edition and the Realme GT7. But if you want a little bit more flash and you want some luxury branding in your phone, that is one option you can consider. So anyway, back to the standard edition. Powering this phone is the MediaTek Dimensity 9400E. This is a brand new chip that was announced just by the time you're watching this video, like two weeks ago. So it's like the newest silicon on the block and it is a four nanometer chip that is quite near tip top flagship level, but not all the way. So in MediaTek's pecking order of chips, this would be number two or number three right now. It's not MediaTek's highest level chip, but it performs at a near flagship level, as you can see from the Geekbench numbers. And also I was playing graphically intensive game like Devil May Cry and Call of Duty. Both of these games are graphically intensive and you can see the frame rate keeps up at 60 FPS with no stutter and also performance is smooth. Let's take a look at the camera system now. You have a triple camera array on the back headlined by a 50 megapixel main camera, Sony IMX906 f1.9 aperture and one over 1.5 inch sensor size I find the main camera to be still a pretty strong performer because realme or slash opal's image processing is quite mature there's a lot of film simulation profiles here that i really like and i actually started liking them from when i was testing the opal Find n5 so these film simulation profiles recreate the look of different film cameras and i actually think some of them look really good the main camera the sensor size is not that large so you're not going to get the most shallow depth of field video stabilization for the main camera is also really good we're watching main camera with the realme gt7 main camera pro and then here's main camera and then you have the 2x telephoto back out to the ultra wide So I think this main camera will not disappoint unless you are expecting like tip top ultra smartphone level. But you know, if you're not used to those type of cameras, this main camera is definitely more than good enough. You also have a 50 megapixel zoom lens, just 2x optical zoom range though. So it defaults to about like a 50 millimeter, which is pretty good, but I do wish um, the default optical range should to be a little bit longer, like 70 millimeter or something. You can do digital zoom up to like 3x, 4x. It still looks okay, but anything beyond that, like 5, 6, 7x, it doesn't look that good. But keep it to 2x, 3x, you have yourself a pretty good telephoto camera. So this telephoto lens also doubles as a telemacro lens, so you can get quite close to a subject and still keep focus. Video stabilization for the telephoto lens, it's also decent not amazing but not bad however the ultra wide camera here an 8 megapixel ultra wide f2.2 it's pretty weak like again you're gonna need perfect lighting to use this ultra wide camera if you try to use it at night it's gonna be a little bit soft and fuzzy i do think the selfie camera on the front is really good 32 megapixel i think it does a really good job of exposing for the face and the background and i think it adds just enough beautification to it, but not so overboard that it looks fake. But it does touches up your skin a little bit. It's not as like raw as like an iPhone. You can turn it off if you like, but man, I, my skin is not good, man. I actually prefer a little bit of beautification. So I think, you know, I prefer the selfie camera better than like the iPhones. And you can record selfie videos at 4K up to 60 FPS. 4K 30 right now, but you can show up to 4K 60, but this is a 4K 30 footage. Okay, on the software front, this phone runs Realme UI 6.0 based on Android 15. And Realme UI, to be honest, still looks and feels very much like Color OS. But that's good news because I really like Color OS. In fact, I think Color OS is my favorite Android skin. I've been saying this for like six or seven years now. And I like Color OS better than iOS too. Basically, it's my favorite phone operating system. It is fast, it is smooth, animations are just buttery like check out when i swipe through all the apps look at how the apps just swipe through it it just has the speed to it that um some other phone uis do not have like you use like a color os or realme ui or oxygen os and then you jump back to like huawei's ui it feels a little bit slow and on top of that this phone has like 
every shortcut gesture imaginable, double tap to lock the screen, double tap to wake, and off screen gesture, meaning you can control aspects of the phone when the screen is off. So one of my favorites, you can control music playback um, when the, without turning on the screen. So for example, let me play something right now. So the screen is off now. If I draw a pause symbol with two fingers, it stops the music. And if I draw again, it will play again. And then I can skip track by drawing an arrow. One, two, three. I can back. So I love that, to be able to control your music without needing to turn on the phone screen. With every other phone, you have to at least turn on the phone screen to access the music widget. And that's just like some of the samples. Like there's like so many more gestures here. Like you can double tap the back of the phone to activate a feature. Color OS is the pioneer of all of this. Color OS was doing all of these before like Vivo and Xiaomi and Samsung jumped on board. And that's not all. If you guys have been watching my Oppo phone reviews the last year, you may notice that I've been raving about this multitasking system that Oppo designed on Oppo phones is called Boundless Display. On OnePlus phone, it's called Open Canvas. I don't know what Realme calls it, but Realme has it too. So basically, if you open two apps, say I'm gonna open Chrome, and I launch into split screen mode, and now I open Instagram. I can now have two apps open in a grid, but the grid is not locked into a static grid that is stuck to the phone screen. So basically, when I need to use the app, like so now I'm on Chrome, if I wanna jump into Instagram, I just tap on it and it zooms into that app, and I can jump between two apps while still getting both apps in near full screen mode. With any other phone, if you do split screen app, they're locked into that grid, that's half a screen, so it sometimes is a little bit, little bit tough to use an app in half a screen mode. Here, you don't have to worry about that. You basically can jump between two apps really quickly and get them both at full size if you like, or if you can still put it back into half screen mode if you like. There's also some gimmicky features that I personally won't use that much, like air gestures, which allows you to, like if you're on Instagram or TikTok, you can cycle through stories by like flicking your wrist up and down. It also works with scrolling through web pages too. I don't think I'll be using it much, but it is here if you care about that. So yeah, this is the Realme GT7 in a nutshell. You have best in class battery life, all day battery life without compromising. Like you don't have to deal with a bulky or heavier phone just to get better battery life. You have a phone that it's still light and thin, but then you get a much bigger battery than before. You have a really beautiful screen, top notch screen. You have a main camera that's like, Pretty good. I, I want to say the main camera, if I give it a grade, I would give it like a B plus or even A minus. It's a good main camera, best in class software. And also IP65 water and dust resistance and excellent stereo speakers and haptics too. So this is one of the more well-rounded phones out there if you don't want to pay the premium to go into ultra territory. So yeah, that's why for this review of the Realme GT7. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, please consider subscribing to my channel. It will help me a lot. I have a lot more coming. Next week, I'll be in WWDC covering Apple. So there might be a lot of stuff there. And after that, I'll hopefully get my hands on the Huawei Mate Pad Fold. I hope so. So yeah, stay tuned. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.